Hey, what is going on guys? Rudinell here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, now in the last couple of videos we've been testing uh, some stuff about strings, we've been trying to figure out if it's all alphabetical letters, we've been trying to find out if it's a lowercase, that sort of thing. Now in this video we want to actually test if it's full of numbers, if it's full of digits. Now the way we do this is very similar to the way we started with our um, uh, the first one we were working with, if the string is entirely alphabetical. So uh, let's try and actually piece this together now. It's a little bit of a strange functionality because a part of me feels like we're doing more work than we really have to, but when you try and take a look at the looping uh, functionality that we build, it's 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 really strange because we can't actually test if something is not equal to something, because if something is not equal to something and you're already at the beginning of the loop, then it has a little bit of a problem. <laughs> and we'll just go to straight to the end, even if it is in there eventually later on and that sort of thing. So, the point that I'm truly really trying to say to you guys, though, is that um, there's a lot of ways to actually build something in code. So what I'm actually teaching you may or may not be the best part, be the best way to do something, but the thing is, uh, it's kind of up to you guys as the programmer to try and figure out what do you think is the best strategy, what is the best algorithm here, what can you actually do to piece some things together the way that you feel like you should be working. So, anyway, that's enough of me talking. Take a look at what we got here. Our syntax is going to be call if the string is digits, we'll pass in the string, and we will, of course, need a return type, or a return variable. So, first, let's actually create an array of all the things that are bad. If we get a little bad stuff array, just like we've been working with previously, you'll be able to find out that we're going to be working with digits, so a digit is obviously going to be our delimiter, because we don't want to be looking through anything that is a digit, but we still want to be able to actually use anything else. So, uh, first we're going to want everything that is not a letter or anything, so you can just try and go through each shift formation of the numbers on your keyboard, and remember to be using a zero as your delimiter. Now this might take you guys a while. I know it sure does take me quite a while. Asterisk. Really, if you just try and stay focused, though, it might work out in your favor. Remember, we can't use quotation marks or anything, or any redirection symbols. So that's a bit of a problem. And uh, that covers all those. We do need space, and we still need the letters. E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. And we'll still need, of course, the uppercase letters. So I think we're in a good spot. Really, it's kind of hard to tell when you're working with that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, let's move on. Um, next, we're going to need to actually get the string that we pass into the program. So we'll call create string. You can call mine content. It's just everything we pass into it, and we'll need a limit. So this should look very, very familiar to you because we've been doing this so much. It's sort of like the same functionality for everything that we're working with. We're just testing for different things, looping in different ways, and um, having more things to be able to worry about. And I'm sure you know we can set our return type to be 1 by default, and begin to loop. We'll need our limit, because we're going to loop through the string first, and we'll actually get each individual character out of it, so character can equal the value of our content at our current position, and then we'll loop through our bad stuff. We're using a different variable name, remember? Then we can go ahead and test if the string formation of our character is equal to the string formation of the current thing in the bad stuff. Because if it is, then that's bad. Hence the uh, hence the bad stuff. <laughs> and we'll use h inside of our index here. And we can go ahead and set 
2 to equal 0, and then we'll go to the end so we break out of the loop, because we know that we've figured things out, and n can be our label right over here. Okay, that should be all that we need to worry about, it's just a mass of crazy stuff that's bad. So, uh, let's actually create a new script. I'm sure you guys know what I'm putting together here. Passing the value of the string that we just created. And uh, our return can be return. We can echo out the value of return the way we need to. And now when we get CMD open, if we were to run script, it should give us zero because we don't have any digits whatsoever in here. Now if we had some digits in here, let's find out what will happen. We still get zero because it's not entirely digits. If we have a good amount of digits then, and we have maybe space character in it, though it's still going to give us zero because there's a space character in it. If we have any letters, or any exclamation points, or any special characters, oh, doesn't actually have test for that. Well, that's something that we got to be able to work with, or maybe it's just something we have to deal with. Who knows? <laughs> because, are those inside of our test things? Yes, they are. Now, each individual piece is there. Well, it's likely that because this is an exclamation point and we use those for variable types along with the percent signs, those might give us some hard time, uh, a bit of a hard time, because we use those for variable expansion and uh, for actually retrieving the value of a variable. So maybe those is just a little quirk that we might have to deal with along with the waka wakas, the greater than lesson symbols, and the double quotation marks. So uh, that's something that you should keep an eye out for. Now... If we have anything that's full of digits, that's okay. It'll give us one that is full of digits. And now, anything else, though, it will tell you otherwise. Even if it's a capital letter, that sort of thing, you will have to worry about it. But there you go, guys. This is just a simple, quick and easy way. Not really quick and easy, because you do have to test for a lot of other things that might give you a problem. But it's a strange way to do it, especially. But keep in mind, there are plenty of other ways to do this. And, you know, I kind of trust that you guys will be able to figure it out. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, though, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.